Bible teaches that what we do with very little is what we'll do with much. God has always rewarded those who remain faithful to Him. Faithfulness is whenever we consistently do the right things for the right reason all the time. God opens doors for the person who remains faithful to Him. This is Pastor Tom Arnold inviting you to join me for part four of the message, Faithful with a Few. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. Okay, now here's my final illustration of people being faithful with a few. Okay, so we got three examples here. Here's a New Testament example of somebody being faithful with a few. It's when Jesus fed the 5,000. I want you to notice in John chapter 6, verse number 1, after this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, now think about the context of this. He's talking to Philip, and he's kind of testing him. He's kind of getting Philip to think. He says, Philip, where are we going to buy bread so these people may eat? And he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, I got an idea. Now, do you think this idea went over big? How many think that when somebody said, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my life? I hope they didn't say that, but it's possible they did. Hey, 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 there is a boy here, and he has five barley loaves and two fish. But then Andrew said, but what are they for so many? Andrew's kind of mixed in with the crowd and found this one boy had a lunch. He said, come on with me. And Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. You know what there's a temptation to do when you don't have very much? Not to be thankful for what you do have. In all four of the Gospels, it's very clear that Jesus did this. He gave thanks for what he had. When you don't have much and when the needs are great, there's a real temptation to be very ungrateful, to be a whiner to be a complainer. It's very easy to gripe whenever the pressure's on you. But let me tell you, this is the day the Lord has made. Come on, let us rejoice and let's be glad in it. When things change, Pastor, I'm going to change. No, it's you changing that changes circumstances. So what did he do? He took the loaves, and when he had given things, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish so much as they wanted. So notice what happens here. They start distributing out the food, and it keeps multiplying. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. So they started out with five loaves, two fish, They finished up with 12 baskets full of food. Remember, when you're faithful with a little bit, God can give you more. When you're just faithful with a little bit, you just keep being faithful. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Do it unto the Lord, not unto a man. Do it unto the Lord. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. Verse 14, and when the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. So there were basically four options here. Number one, 
send the people out of here. Outsource the problem. Go. That's option A. Here's another option. Let's raise enough money to feed everybody. That sounds like a legitimate option. But here's another option. There is a boy here. It's not much, but it could be a start. Now, here's where you're at right now. You don't have all of it, but you know what you have in your hand? You have a start. You got a starter. You got a little bit to get going. And that's where we're at in life. Many times we're in situations where we don't have it all, but we've got enough to get started. This story's coming to my mind, so we'll, we'll see where it goes, all right? So whenever I was in high school, there were a couple guys that worked in the same grocery store I worked at, and they got out of the grocery store business, and they started mowing lawns. And they came to me one day, and they said, Tom, now this doesn't sound like much now, okay, but they said, Tom, we earn $60 a piece, and we quit working at 1 o'clock. Well, I thought, you earn $60 a piece, and you quit working at 1 o'clock. Well, I knew what I was making per hour, and I knew I'd have to work longer than 1 o'clock. Well, that thought went through my mind. I thought, you know, I'm going to get a sign, a little flyer, and I went out door to door, and I told them this was lawn service. I was knocking on doors. And I went to door after door, and I said, we're just in the area putting together a route. And I'm putting together a route, and I'd like for you to be my first customer. You and one more will make two. So anyway, I'm knocking on doors. I'm going down door to door. Well, there was only one problem. We had a family lawnmower, but it was not like something that was on a commercial level. Does that make sense? But it was a starter mower. I didn't have a truck, but my car had a trunk. And I, my dad did have a weed eater we'd given him for Father's Day, and it wasn't much, but he did have an electric weed eater. I didn't have a gas edger, but I did have one of those you could push with your hands. That's old school. Some of you don't know, but there was this old edger that predated the weed eater. It went back to the pyramids of Egypt. But anyway, it was this old. So I had this, and so I had me a mower. I had a trunk. I had an electric weed eater, and I had an edger. But you know what I had? More than all that, I had God's blessing. Amen. And I went out knocking on doors. My name's Tom Arnold. I'm putting together a route. It was actually called T&D Lawn Service, Tom and David. But David quit before we ever got our first customer. And so it was really T&D, but I'm chief operation officer, CEO. I'm all of it. So anyway, I'm knocking on doors. I can remember one time, this one homeowner, he was an attorney in North Oklahoma City out by Mercy Hospital. He saw me mowing, and he had this nice lawnmower, nice lawnmower. And I said to him one day, I said, you know what? I'll mow your yard six times if I can have that lawnmower. And he did the math, and he goes, deal. And he even let me start on. In other words, you you can take it now, just mow my yard for the next six weeks, and we're, we're even. I'm out mowing, man. I went from a junker to a nice one. Of course, my dad thought, Tom, yeah, you ruined my lawnmower, and then you've got moved on. But anyway, so I'm mowing with this nice lawnmower. And then, you know, I was working down the street from where this guy lived. I was mowing with that electric weed eater. And I'm weed eating, and all of a sudden, I can still remember, a little puff of smoke came out of the top of that weed eater. Just went, and I knew, game over. Okay, so the weed eater was done. And then eventually, you know, I bought me a better lawnmower later than that one I had. Then I got a pickup truck. How many know I didn't have to walk into the lawn and garden? I need the best mower you got on credit. Sometimes we got the cart in front of the horse. At the time, one of the better mowers was called the snapper mower, okay? Well, I had the snapper mower. And I can remember somebody said, how are you getting through college? I say, man, I got a snapper scholarship. That snapper right there, it paid my way. Paid for all my books, all my clothes, all my tuition. But how many know that mower didn't work unless I worked? Now, why am I saying this? Wherever you're at in life, be faithful with what's right in front of you. Oh, Pastor, I want to go with you to Mission Field. I want to go to the nations. I want to go to the nations of the world. Well, how about your neighbor? Have you ever talked to them? No, I'm not talking to my neighbor. That might hurt my reputation. (laughs) So you want to fly all over the world and reach people, but you're not going to reach the person right around you. How many know the scriptural pattern is go through Jerusalem, then go to Judea, then go to Samaria? That means start local and go international. Go through Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, then go on out to the uttermost parts of the earth. Be faithful. So begin with what you have. What are some lessons from this? Give the Lord everything you have. 
in this story, two times in what we just read, the phrase give thanks was there, or Jesus gave thanks. Be sure to be thankful for where you're at in life. Amen. Well, Pastor, now here's how it's working. See, I'm real miserable right now, but see, five years from now, I'm going to have a better attitude. Who you are today is a picture of who you're going to be down here. I'm a pastor, I'm a grumpy parent right now. I mean, when these kids are little, I'm mean, I'm hateful, I'm, I, I hate this season of my life. But now when they get older, okay, now here's how it works. Little kids have little problems. Can I get an amen here? And big kids have big problems. And if you're having trouble over here at five, let me tell you, when you triple that and they're at 15, it's still going to be bigger problems. Okay, there is a revelation here. It's called enjoy the journey. Now, Pastor, right now, I'm miserable. I hate life. I despise working. But, Pastor, mark it down. When I retire, when I retire, oh, I'm telling you, life's going to change for me. Here's why I'm going to tell you this. This is the God truth. People that are miserable now, it has a way of just following them all through life. Today is your day of salvation. Now is your accepted time. Oh, Pastor, I hate this time of my life. But, Pastor, when we go on vacation, when we get to Disney World, well, let me tell you something. When they're charging you $5 for a Coke, you may not have the joy of the Lord. You say, Pastor, you're just trying to entertain us. You're trying to be funny. I'm telling you the absolute truth. You know what you're doing? You're despising today and you're idealizing tomorrow. Oh, yeah, Pastor, down the line it's going to be. You know, people retire and they have challenges. They have health challenges. They have things they have to go. Let me tell you, you have to use your faith in every season of your life. Don't idealize the future and don't despise today. Just realize as your days are, so shall his strength be. And his grace will be sufficient for you every day of your life. Well, say, Pastor, no, no, you got it all wrong, totally off base here. Because, see, I'm going through a hard time. We have the Bible says, count it all joy when you face divers' tests and trials because you know this, that the trying of your faith is working patience in your life. Why do I need to be faithful, Pastor? You give me one good reason why I need to be faithful. Here it is, Proverbs chapter 28 and verse number 20. Here's the reason why. A faithful man will abound with blessings. Amen. You give me one good solid reason why I should be faithful to God. Here's a good solid reason right out of the Bible, the inspired word of God, because a faithful man is going to abound with blessings in their life. And so what are you going to do? You're just going to say, oh, we're being faithful. And then you say, yeah, and we're abounding with blessings too. Thanks for joining me today. In the Gospels, Jesus placed a priority on faithfulness. In Luke 16, he said, The one who is faithful with very little is also faithful in much, and the one who is dishonest in a very little will be dishonest in much. It's our faithfulness in the little things that will determine the big things in life. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.